yeah it has been an interesting year for me a lot has gone down Come with me for a nature walk while we catch up on some things. I've never done one of these, but I love watching YouTubers who do this because they're so relaxing. If you're on the treadmill or doing chores or something, feel free to walk along with me. So I wanted to give you guys an update on a few different things, including the stalker situation, what I've been up to in my absence, as well as share some other crazy things that have happened in my life this year. Since I don't like wasting anyone's time, story time starts at three minutes and 52 seconds in. And if you're like me with a low attention span, I'd recommend watching this video on 1.5 speed. So I'm here in my hometown in Michigan. I'm here taking care of my mother because she is about to have foot surgery and I wanna make sure that she's situated and in a good spot. Also doing a couple of projects around the house. The weather here is pretty good right now. It's nice to kind of wear a coat and scarf again. Pulled out my boots. The leaves are starting to change even though you can't tell here yet but it's just, it's really nice. I'm actually a big nature girly. I love going on hikes, long walks to get my mind right. And so this is how I'm doing my 10,000 steps today. Me on my lonesome in the woods. I was here during COVID and in order to kind of take a break from my parents' house, I would come out here and listen to books on tape, sit by the water, meditate, just kind of thinking about where I wanted my life to go and just to process things. Highly recommend if you've never tried it. It's about to get super beautiful here in a second. We are at the bridge. Bear with me guys, I've never vlogged before. It's not really my thing as you can kind of tell. You're up. This looks like, woo. Right? Let's go on an adventure. Thank God that's over. Do you ever feel like you just need to get your mind right or like you're just like super stressed out and like can't focus? Literally just go take a walk in the woods. <laughs> that's what I do. But it's harder though because I live in the city. So there are always people around. Ooh, we have a dilemma. Which way do we go? Mm, we're gonna go left. Heard something rustling in the forest. Awkward. I keep hearing things like rustling away as I walk towards it. The squirrel. Nature makes me so happy. <laughs> Look at this. When I was in college, my friend and I would go out the night before and then the next day we'd come to this park with like gallon jugs of water and ibuprofen and sandwiches and just walk off the night before. <laughs> Ugh, best hangover cure ever. But seriously, I haven't been in peace and silence in so long. It's been, it's so nice. I used to walk through these woods thinking about where I wanted to be in life, thinking about content creation. And even though it hasn't been perfect, it's crazy the stark difference in my life from when I last walked in this place. I guess let's start with the stalker update. <laughs> so apparently a much larger YouTuber did a whole video on the stalker thing. And what's crazy is that that day I was like, okay, I need to put out a piece of content. And I was already dealing with that situation. And so I just like stitched together a couple videos, made it happen. And then it became this whole thing. Ooh, look at this. It's getting pretty. I can hear a woodpecker pecking at a tree. You hear that? So I think the last update that I did on that story was that that guy finally left our community after terrorizing us for the entire year. Hadn't been paying rent for like seven months, which sucks because rent is really, really expensive. It sucked because it was scary for us to try to just walk through the halls. You'd like run into him in some creepy corner because he was always creeping around. But yeah, he finally moved. And then 
Turns out she only moved to the building like two blocks away. My friend told me that she saw him at the dog park that's literally a block away. And then I ran into him one day when I was going for a walk by the water. And I was just like, are we ever going to get away from that guy? But the good news is that I haven't seen that guy in a really long time. I'm probably since like April. There's actually a subreddit though for one of the buildings that he lives in. And I was going to post on there just kind of like warning people about him. Because you know that if he was torturing us... He's definitely torturing other people. He can't help himself. He's like compulsive or something like that. I also went back to the hotel that he had like stolen from because remember he was sitting at the bar, hitting on the bartenders and and then charging food and drinks on other people's tabs. And the staff or the head of security tried holding him, but it took the police like four hours to come. So they didn't catch him. They still weren't able to do anything or like file any charges. I was at a, another party there, the pool, and the head of security told me that, which is crazy. So community terror. We were all working together to try to bring this guy down. And it's like nothing stuck. An interesting update is that a producer for a new reality TV show contacted me after seeing all of the TikToks and like YouTubes about the situation. And they're doing a new show about neighbor disputes or something like that. So I went through like the whole process. I, well, the beginnings of the process. Um, I haven't heard from him in a while, so I don't know if anything's going to come from that, but that was kind of interesting. So let's talk a little bit about my channel and what happened and why I kind of stopped creating content for a period of time. So we all kind of know the story. Like I started up, got like 30,000 subscribers really, really quickly. Thank you guys. Love you. And then my account got demonetized. Well, then during that time, I got laid off. Okay. So I moved, got laid off, and my YouTube channel got demonetized, which I could have fought. I didn't even realize that, but... It was a lot. And then I was also working on my second channel. I loved waking up every day and looking and seeing my YouTube stats and like how much we were growing and like all the comments. And then I couldn't get that account demonetized. That was like a major blow. So then I was like, okay, like maybe I need to take some time to regroup. I like stopped posting. I went ghost, you know, trying to figure out my next move. And also like enjoy my new city. Like I loved, loved where I moved. It's one of the best decisions that I've ever made, the best city wise. And I have like a lot of friends, a very active social life. So I just kind of like retreated into that. So then in like January, I started dating somebody. I started seeing somebody. Things were going pretty okay. And then in April, my my bestie and I decided that we're going to Bali. And Bali was an incredible experience. I cannot stress enough, you guys, that it is one of the best places in the world. I couldn't believe that it took me this long to see Asia. I've been to Europe a lot. You know, I've been to, to South America. I've been to Africa, but I've never been to Asia. And I'm obsessed one of the things they don't tell you about it is that even though the ticket's expensive to get there, you know, it might be like $1,200. By the time you get there, everything is so cheap and reasonable. Like that is one of the best places to get your bang for your buck. And it's super, super safe, at least in Bali. We only went to uh, Changu, Ubud, and Uluwatu while we were there for two and a half weeks. But that was enough for the time. I look forward to going back for a month or two if I can. I have so many other places that I wanna see. Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Japan, Seoul. I mean, Seoul mainly for the beauty treatments. But, but yeah, I, I highly recommend Bali. You can easily get away with spending a couple grand there after your ticket if you don't drink liquor. So liquor and like wine is really expensive. But if you stick with just the food, which is like Michelin star everywhere, and it's so cheap, like it's hard even to crack like 15 bucks or 10 bucks for like a meal if you don't get alcohol. Um, but the local, the local beer is Bintang. We drank a lot of that and it was amazing. So, so yeah, should I do, should I do a Bali vlog? Maybe I'll include some pictures in here. Maybe. Let me know if you guys want to see it. So anyway... I get back from Bali, I am feeling rejuvenated. You know, I posted that I was ready to go to like get back into content creation. And then about a week after I get back, me and the guy I was seeing broke up. We really didn't want the same things. He was also kind of an asshole. One of those stealthy ones, you know, that like catch you off guard. But that day that we broke up, we went to tapas and salsa dancing. But earlier that day around one o'clock, I hear a noise in my bathroom. I'm like putting my makeup on and I hear help, help. 
and you can't hear anything in my building. They were yelling really, really loud, and my neighbors were basically crying for help. I hit up the, the group chat really quick to see if someone could get to him more quickly, and they were like, no, just, just call the front desk. I call 911 first, and then I call the front desk, and 911 actually gets there really, really quick, probably within like four or five minutes. Um, I thought that it was my upstairs neighbor. Turns out it was my literal next door neighbor. The paramedics come in and the first thing I hear them say, cause you know, my, my door is open at that point. The first thing I hear them say is, oh, there's flooding. And I hear them going to work on this guy. You know, I'm like hearing the beeps. Like it's just frantic. It was just like so much yelling. I've never heard so much chaos in a moment. And they were working on him for like a really long time. I hear them like counting down and then you know, I hear that he flatlined, so he passed away. And it was crazy because somebody, one of my neighbors had posted in the group chat before, that guy was in the lobby, he could like barely breathe. He like couldn't even put his keys in his pocket. And so I think that the reason why, even though I called the police to my upstairs neighbor, I think that the front desk knew it was my neighbor because they knew where he lived because he'd been so messed up in the lobby right before that. So, yeah, it was, like, really, really sad. Um, the coroner came. All that happened. They came around, like, four. And then, you know, I went to Tapas to go meet the guy that I was dating. We do salsa. And then we go to his house. And we're, like, sitting on the couch. And we're, like, talking. That talk results in a breakup. And I'm, like, I'm going home. I get home. I'm so tired and overwhelmed. And I realized that there is water everywhere. Like everything's wet. My bed is wet. I was in such a crazy mental state that I just put the covers over me and like went to bed. Fully clothed, full makeup on. And I woke up the next day to all of this noise happening in the hall because they were trying to get rid of the water from my neighbor's house. And I like opened the door and I'm like, hey guys, everything's wet. And so within like five minutes of waking up and I hadn't even had my coffee like the day after this breakup happens, I have 10 people, the management office, all of these different vendors in my apartment looking at all my stuff. It turned out that half of my stuff, half of my stuff was lost from that water, which is like a huge biological hazard because of what happened in the water. I'm not going to go into like too much detail, but it was really bad. So then, you know, getting, getting back from Bali, dealing with a breakup, dealing with losing half of my stuff all within like a week span of being back from Bali, I just could not even, okay guys? I could not even. So then, um, I posted about this on TikTok, but I had a ex-boyfriend of a friend who was a model that like passed away, but he was an alumni of my university. So you know, when I moved to the city, I met up with him. He said that he was like launching this new company and he needed some marketing and business development help. I basically would take a higher up role to produce this new product, which is really innovative. It was press on nails that changed color through an app and the technology was there. And before I took the job, I met with him and like some Ulta execs and, you know, everything was great. It was nice to reconnect with him, to talk about my friend. And then, yeah, he hired me on to do the work and we were getting ready to pitch VCs because they needed another round of funding. They also needed some female representation, obviously. And I was like a really good fit. So I was doing videos, redoing all of their marketing materials. I also had a stake in the company, which was really exciting because I've never had such a large stake in the company and we went through like attorneys and everything. So to make sure that I didn't get screwed because sometimes when you work for startups, they try to entice people to work harder or a payoff in the end. And then once everything goes through or the company is bought out, then people end up screwed. Like they didn't get the same stock as, as the original owners and like all of that. So we had everything solidified. I was in like a really good spot, excited about the project, excited, you know, to be working in small business again for something that was supposed to be in stores throughout the United States. And then something happened to me that has never happened to me before. And that is that once payday hit that was in my contract, I didn't get paid. So then at that point, I started getting concerned about the company and its financial position. And so I slowed my role in working and then I stopped it within like five days because I realized that I wasn't the only one that they owed money to. They definitely had been through this recently with other people because I remember they kept trying to, to utilize like my network in order to contact VCs. They just wanted me to make a list of people to contact. They didn't really care as much about like the content 
that we were putting out, they were like, no, we need to like get this funding in. And I was like, well, if we're going to approach people, especially people in my network, I want to make sure that we look as professional as possible and that we have it together because I'm not going to be, you know, looking crazy. And I'm so glad that I did that. And I slowed the roll a little bit and took my time instead of doing that in the first month because they would have utilized my network and reached out to the people I, I knew and like used my name. And that's something that I can't have. So I talked a little bit about the situation on TikTok because I was really, really irritated. I already mentally was ready to go, ready to go back into the office, ready to hustle for this company. I had like set my mind to it and then everything just kind of imploded. That was not something that I needed again between my job, between like the two YouTubes and like everything that I was passionate about. That, that was like a big blow. So get this. So I talked about them on TikTok, put them on blast, we'll take nails, Alchemy Labs, talking about what I'd endured dealing with them. These are a bunch of Harvard people, by the way. And they sent me a cease and desist. They like text me, they emailed me, but I knew because I know something about a little something that I was in the right and that I did not have to take those videos down. Them asking me to do that was basically a request. And until they paid me, I wasn't gonna do that because everything in there was true and I was not slandering anybody. So I just ignored it and kept the videos up. Finally, after a bit, they paid me half of what they were supposed to pay me. So they still owe me money. So here's the crazy part. About a few weeks ago, I get a message on TikTok from somebody asking me if my video was about Dennis Fountaine. Dennis being the person that my model friend was dating. I replied, yes. Are you familiar with him? They said that their friend got taken by him. They wouldn't give me any more details because they said it was discoverable, but they said that I should Google him. So I Googled him and all of this stuff pops up, okay? Serial fraudster on the run, mug shot and all. Y'all do not understand how crazy it was for me to see this. I've known this man, I think four, three or, three or four years. Like I said, he dated my friend who's now passed away. And she was my, my first friend in San Diego. And we were both moving from Seattle, Washington. And we both were just like, we met in an Uber pool. and We were both trying to escape the Seattle gray. And we were both going to the same neighborhood. And so it just felt like fate. And so that was my first friend in San Diego. But she was kind of crazy. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Before she passed away, I actually ended up having to cut her off because... You know how you sometimes have those friends where you can be driving in a car with them, you would be in the passenger seat and they would like drive off a cliff and you wouldn't know any better? That friend. I have so many crazy stories about this girl. And the second time I came to visit her in San Diego, she was seeing this guy. She um, was doing like the triggering thing. I was not super familiar with that lifestyle at that point. And honestly, more power to you girls to do it because it's your bag. Yeah, suddenly she was like dating this guy, you know, he had a lot of money, he had like a really big house. And he'd also lived in Seattle for like seven years after grad school at Syracuse, like in the same med school house that I was in. So I was like, wow, like, all these things are lining up, right? Only to have it turn out later that a friend's gone and this guy was a serial fraudster. The second time I landed in San Diego, this guy's brother was like, on his deathbed. I had never even like met his brother before. My friend had vacation with them in Mexico, I don't know, like three weeks before. And suddenly something was wrong with his brother. His heart was hurting or something like that. And she kept saying like, you need to go to the hospital. You need to go to the hospital. And he didn't go to the hospital. And so finally he went when he felt so bad. He checked into in La Jolla and he never made it out. He was on life support for weeks. And when I landed, Dennis had asked he wanted to come say bye and I was like yeah I can accompany you girl and I'll like stay outside and wait for you in the hospital and this is like oh why doesn't Shar come in and I was like is that something that I should be doing like is that appropriate but I was just like whatever he's cool sometimes we'd like go and hang out at his massive house in La Jolla and I'd stay in one wing of the house and they'd stay in the other wing and we would just like eat food and like hang out and like listen to records and stuff you know it was cool it was all PG stuff so I was like, why not, you know, support this guy? This is happening with his brother. And his brother died. And I sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow as they, like, took him off life support. Yeah, and, and that's that story. But anyway, to see this guy, <laughs> his face plastered all over Google for being a serial froster, Santa Clara County, all of that stuff. It, it's, it's just gnarly. It's like some American Greed stuff, which is one of my favorite shows. 
American Greed, call me, call me. So I contact the DA's office. Shortly, a detective calls me back and I've been texting with him to give him any information that I have on catching this guy. And he thinks that he's still in the United States. I wasn't sure if he'd be in the United States. Even though we were close to Mexico, I did not think that he would skip town to Mexico because he really does not like Mexico. But he did have a brother, like an older brother in Japan, who was first like white male geisha there. So I was wondering if maybe he skipped out to Asia because he had a whole three or four months before his sentencing to like skip town. So, so yeah. But they think that he's still around in San Diego, specifically Del Mar. So we'll see. But anyway, yeah, I was happy to help the police in any way that I could just because, you know, he wasted my time during like a period where I really needed to stay uplifted and put my head down and work hard. Yeah, that just sucked. And now I'm pretty sure that might have been my videos that finally got this guy caught because there was finally a trail online of something he didn't make because one of the ways that he was able to create the illusion of a company was like websites and creating really solid teams of people in order to like get the money and then he was just kind of ponzing it you know paying people here or there to keep the operation going which is literally an episode of American Greed I'm obsessed so yeah um which brings me to today you might have realized that I started making content again recently I'm not like fully up and running yet. I'm definitely going to get better more quick because I'm kind of slow right now because I haven't been doing it for a while. But I realized that it's time to chit or get off the pot jar. Are you going to do this or not? And I believe in this community and I believe in the message and like what I'm trying to do. So it's now or never. I'm also working on some nameless faceless channels as well. And I'm going to be converting the other YouTube that I have to something interesting as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this to be the year where things happen. I feel like the last couple of years, I, I started to kind of climb and get to where I wanted to be, but then I kind of like stagnated. And I, there's this chart that talks about the path to success. People think that it's a straight line, but really it goes like this. And some of the biggest dips that you have before having success happen right before you have like the ultimate success. So I'm going to see this year as a dip and I am ready to go. Have you heard about this winter arc thing? I'm currently working on that. It's kind of like 75 hard, but it's more like 90 days. Basically, you start, you know, pulling things together in October, like your workout, you set your goals and you are steadily working towards them. And then by New Year, when everyone else is starting over, you've got like a solid period of work in. So then by the time summer hits, you are ready to go like body, goals, everything. I'm on my winter arc right now. A year from now, I'm going to be the happiest version, the best version of myself that I have ever been. And I hope that you guys are part of it. Look at this. I have big dreams, guys. Big dreams. And so the whole channel and the social media thing is the beginning of it. But part of hitting those goals is to have clear, attainable goals in the meantime. So I'm putting those goals out here on the internet because I think that if you want something in existence, like you have to speak it or you have to write it. As I was going through stuff from my childhood, I found a list that I'd made in high school about all the things I wanted to do with my life. It was like go to Europe, move to a city, write a book, all these different things. And it's crazy how many of those things I had actually accomplished. And it was funny because at the time when I wrote that list, this is crazy. You know, I'm from a small, small town in Michigan. I'm like a, a small town girl. I'll be lucky if I get a couple of, of these things out of like the 30 that I wrote. And I got almost every single thing on that list and I completely forgot about that list. So my first goal is that I want to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of December on YouTube. I'm getting like a steady amount of subscribers right now just because, you know, I just started putting out content again and I know that I need to get more steady, but I was able to gain 30,000 subscribers within three months. So I feel like 50,000 subscribers and I have 34,000 now is not horrible. Hopefully by summer next year, I'll have 100,000 subscribers which would get me my YouTube plaque. I've been wanting that YouTube plaque. Please help me get it. My other goal is 100,000 subscribers on TikTok. Now that one might be a little more difficult because right now I'm at 67 
1.5 or something like that. So I would have to be putting content out almost every single day up until December. But I'm going to try. I also want to try out some fun things with like TikTok shop. I mean, I've had some clients tell me that they have made like $100,000 other black female creators in one month on TikTok shop. So I want to play around with it a little bit. I'm a big like stats person. Like I like achieving new goals. And so, yeah, if I can achieve a new goal where there's like money involved, I'm right there. I know that I'm smart enough to do it. It's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. It's so pretty. I love it. Also, I would love it if I could get 5,000 followers on Instagram. I haven't really been doing a lot with Instagram in years, but I definitely want to utilize it as another type of platform. Um, I love fashion and like traveling and all that. So I figured I'd use it for that. Something about me is that every platform I have, I kind of use it differently. So I don't just like repost TikToks to my YouTube. I don't post my TikToks to Instagram. I'm not an Instagram influencer. I just kind of like have it. So I want to start using it more professionally. And I would love to get some of the larger sponsors by December 21st as well and start doing that process. And by February of next year, I would love to sign with an agency that could help me with my sponsorships and all of that. So the whole reason why I even started doing this social media stuff was because I want to be a famous fiction author. I have an idea for another book that is in a woman-centered space, but I am very passionate about this project that I've had in my mind for years. So by February, I also would like to be shopping that around to publishers. In terms of finances, by February, I would like to be making more money a month than I ever have made consistently. And I want to get hotter than I've ever been, which means going to the gym, doing Pilates. I will be tracking that journey as well online. And if you can feel that a little bit, please, please, please support me. So yeah, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for still being here through all the craziness that's gone on with my life this year. Craziness with the channel and some of the inconsistency. I'm getting back to what I originally set out to do. So I hope that you get to enjoy a little bit of this beautiful day or evening for yourself. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time. Oh, also, if you do have any questions for me, put them in the comment section and let me know if you want me to do one of these a week. I kind of like this. It also gives me a little bit of a break, even though it's going to be a pain to edit. I feel like it's good for me to kind of like check in with people. But yeah, ciao.